Hi, welcome to module one. And this is part of the homework questions. This is question one, one, uh, visual analysis. And we just had a couple questions about how to read a map. And so I'm not gonna give you the answers to the questions, but I'm gonna just go over how to read this weather map for you. So down below is a standard weather map. And over here tells you the exact date and time that this weather map was taken. So this weather map is a digital shot of what is going on in various temperatures and different movements of wind and so on and so forth around the United States. And it was taken at 7 a.m., you can see down here, and that it was taken on March 19, 2014. So there's some different pieces to this map on how to read it. One of which is all of these little dots right here are actually weather stations and each piece to the weather station holds different information. So where my uh, cursor was, oops, screen shifted, sorry. But where my cursor was is showing a couple different pieces of information. So first one is this top number. The top number is the actual temperature. So it's a literal temperature outside. So right at the dot that I was holding it over, it's 33 degrees. The other piece of information is this secondary number. The secondary number is the dew point. And this is the temperature with which if it was to hit, water would come out of suspension. And so the dew point, meaning that it's pretty high in humidity or very close to that dew point number is 25 in this location. Another piece of information is the dot itself. As you notice, some of the dots have are not black and some of them are black. The dots themselves being shaded in means that there's cloud cover. And if they're not shaded in, it means that there's no cloud cover. And there's even when you get farther in the course, you're going to see weather station points that are like partially shaded. And what they're saying is that it's partial cloud cover, like a 50% cloud cover on theirs. Another piece of information is the secondary number on this side. The secondary number on that side is actually the pressure reading for today. That is uh, how much pressure at that location in millibars. And so when I see this, I know that the pressure right now is a thousand it's a, it's actually 1,002.4. It's 1,002.4. That's actually, the last number is actually the decimal. And that means that it's under very high pressure. But if you notice, some of these don't even have pressure readings. It just helps me know how much pressure, so is there a lot of air molecules in that location pushing down versus where there's not a lot of air molecules. So for example, in here, they actually gave you high and low pressure, telling you that this area is under high pressure, which means all the air in this location is pushing down, so the air is sinking in this location. And then on the surface of the Earth, it's leaving or moving away. And when you're under high pressure, you can expect clear skies, so no clouds, because all the air is sinking, so it is not cooling off and falling out of suspension or coming out of suspension as liquid or ice crystals. So they're not becoming liquids or solids as water droplets. They're actually staying gas because they're sinking and warming up. And all the air is moving away, which means that everything as we're moving on is actually moving away from it. And they're going to move towards low pressure. Everything goes from high to low. This is a process called pressure gradient force. And so I know that all the air is moving from these highs towards these lows out here. And I can actually see a front, which is a whole big weather um, wind current that is moving. And this is a cold front. I know that because I can see the blue icicle shaped movement and I know right along this line there is cold air behind this line pushing towards the locations of warm air. Another thing on this map is a warm front and I know that because I can see my little suns on my warm front line and they are pushing up north. I know the direction that they're going because the front shapes, the little icicles or suns, are actually pointing where they're going. They're pointing to where they're going. Which brings me back to these little weather map dots or weather station dots. I can actually see one other piece of information and that's these little tails. These little tails on here are telling me the direction that the wind is coming from. So I know from this tail on this little weather station that my cursor is over that the wind is coming from the north, right? Because this is the north. So it's a northerly wind and it is going south. So it is moving down towards this front system. 
Same thing over here, for example, I can see that I have this little tail and it's named for where it's coming from. So it's pointing south and east. So this is a southeasterly wind and it is going northwest, right? That's where the cursor is pointing to. So it is pointing up this way. Once again, up this way. So those are the different pieces of information on the map itself. And obviously the question is asking you to compare or look at the temperatures of the cold front and basically which side is colder, this side of the cold front over Arkansas or this side of the cold front over Arkansas. And once again, you're just reading these little numbers and that's kind of a dead giveaway. This is 41, this is 59. So <laughs> you can already see, and you could just call them, you know, east side of the cold front, west side of the cold front in Arkansas, and then how large of a temperature difference. That's subtracting. When they're asking for the difference of something, you're subtracting the high from a low. No negative numbers, right? Just how many temperature degrees are between the two. So it's just a median, right? Uh, so I hope that helps you guys at looking at your weather maps and some different information. Oh, the last thing I didn't go into is these little lines here that almost look like topography lines, but they're not. They're isobar lines, meaning that they're lines of pressure. And they're just telling me different lines of pressure. So everything between this uh, 1,020 right here and this 1,016 is different lines of pressure. So this is 1,020 millibars, this is 1,016 millibars, and so everything in between this line is somewhere between 1,020 and 1,016, and anything on the line is a pressure reading of 1,020, right? So this little dot right here, this weather station is on the line, so if I asked you what is the pressure reading at that location, that pressure reading would be 1,020 because it's sitting directly on the line. And it's not asking for you this, this question right now, but um, just making you familiar with it so that you know how to read a weather map. So I hope this helps. You're gonna encounter a lot more weather maps and I'll try to remember to make videos, but if for some reason I forget to make a video walkthrough, please uh, just notify me and I'll get one together for you guys as soon as possible. Have a good day, bye.